Now, originally written in the Koine Greek, uh, the Gospel of Mark calls Jesus in Mark 6 3 a tecton, uh, which is understood to, meant to be a carpenter. Uh, Matthew 11 through 55 says he's the son of a tecton, uh, although uh, traditionally translated as as carpenter, tecton is rather a general world word from the same root that leads to technical and technology that could cover makers of objects of various materials, even builders. Uh, the association of Jesus with woodworking is constant in the traditions of the first and second centuries, so it goes back that far. Justin Montire. Uh, who died around 165, wrote that Jesus made yokes and plows. So basically he was making tack for animals, uh, oxen and whatnot. Two first century historians, Josephus and Tacitus, uh, both referenced Jesus in their books. Joseph's reference uh, to Jesus in Book 20 of his Antiquities of the Jews, uh, and then Tacitus referred to Christ and his execution by Pilate in his Book 15 of his work, Annals. Uh, both, all scholars generally consider uh, Tacitus' reference uh, to the execution of Jesus to be both authentic and of historical value as an independent Roman source. Most modern scholars and historians consider Jesus' baptism and crucifixion to be definite historical facts. Uh, James D.G. Dunn states that they command almost universal assent and rank so high on the almost impossible to doubt or deny scale of historical facts uh, that they are often the starting points for the study of historical Jesus. Scholars use a, a number of criteria uh, when trying to determine the historical uh, accuracy of Jesus and uh, the time around the, the, that time of the Bible that was written about. Um, Mark was the earliest written gospel and he's usually considered the most historically reliable. So if you, most of the, the information about Jesus that would be more historically accurate evidently comes from the books of Mark. John, who was the uh, last written gospel, uh, he's quite a bit different from the, the other gospels and uh, he's usually considered uh, less reliable than the others, especially Mark. Um, many historical historians and, and, and scholars, we'll just say scholars from now, uh, do not believe that the rising of Lazarus from the dead was actually historically accurate or actually even happened uh, because it only appears in John. It wasn't mentioned in Mark or any of the others. Uh, so a lot of them, so that there's consensus of sorts about uh, whether they believe uh, that part of Jesus' life. Uh, most scholars do agree that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, who by the way was Jesus' cousin. Uh, their mothers were sisters. Now, Jesus grew up in Galilee, and most of his ministry was based in Galilee. Uh, the, the languages spoken in Galilee and Judea during the first century AD include Jewish, Bastillian, Palestinian, uh, Aramaic, uh, Hebrew, and Greek, with Aramaic being predominant because uh, the women 
basically was the mother tongue of all the women in Galilee. So Palestinian Aramaic was most likely what Jesus spoke. He also may, Jesus may have also spoke uh, in Hebrew and Greek. The account of the transfiguration appears in Matthew 17, 1 and 9, Mark 9, 2 and 8, and Luke 9, 9 28 to 26. Uh, Jesus takes Peter and two other apostles to an unnamed mountain where he's transfigured before them. And his face shone, shone like the sun. His clothing became a dazzling white. A bright cloud appears around them. And a voice from the cloud says, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. The transfiguration reaffirms that Jesus is the son of God, as in his baptism, and the command, Listen to him, identifies him as God's messenger and mouthpiece.